This is a video of the Brain Function Index. It's a new product inside of NeuroGuide. Uh, one activates it by first importing an EEG in an eyes closed condition, uh, edit that uh, EEG so there's no artifact, then click Analysis, Brain Function Index, and this type of display will be uh, produced. Uh, what this is is an index of, of efficiency of information processing and, uh, and of effect, efficacy, of efficacy of information processing in uh, these networks. We have 12 networks. There's a addiction, anxiety, attention, uh, dorsal and ventral default network, executive language, memory, mirror neuron, mood, pain, and salience networks. Each of these networks are comprised of uh, a set of Brobman areas, which you can consider as hubs. And we calculated connectivity between the hubs that comprise each network. For example, uh, coherence of phase differences and a phase slope index, uh, and where the phase slope index is a measure of effective connectivity. It's a measure of the uh, magnitude of information flow between the hubs comprising each of these networks. We calculated a discriminant function which is based upon two groups of subjects. One group, are, you can consider the good group, who are peak performers. They, these are individuals that are selected from our normative database that have a high IQ, for example, an IQ of 120 or higher, and are generally very successful in the case of adults, uh, for example, from West Point, um, uh, colonels and uh, majors and um, high-functioning individuals there, as well as businessmen that are very successful, Arizona State uh, School of Business. And so these are peak performers. That's one group. Roughly there are 77 of them, at the, so they're at like at the tail of the normal distribution. And then the low group were those that were not neurologically impaired, but were low performers. They had IQ of 90 or less and they were functioning in school or functioning all right, but we could discriminate between the peak performers and the less than peak performers at 99% accuracy. It varied from 95 to 99% accuracy for each of these networks. We then calculated the discriminant scores that separated these two and evaluated the mean and standard deviation of the discriminant scores for the peak performers. In this way, if you measure the EEG from an individual, uh, let's say post-concussion or pre-treatment uh, baseline, uh, you will c calculate a, a discriminant score. And then when we look at the distance from each of these 12 networks, uh, what the distance is from that individual to the peak performers. So everything's anchored by this group, this special group of high-functioning peak performers. So you can see, for example, in this individual that uh, the, the addiction network is pretty much, it's at nine, uh, and then anxiety, on the average, the discriminant distance from the peak performing group is seven, and that's what you see here, that's the average of each of these networks. Now the individual is given one session of biofeedback, Loretta Z-score biofeedback, and uh, then he was tested again, and you can see he's moved towards a, a moderate or more efficient level of uh, efficiency of information processing uh, in um, most of the networks, a little better in the pain network. Now he was then given a third biofeedback session and now the individual is moved further towards the good level in most of the networks. And so this, this plot gives you a, a view of the history of change of uh, the functional index of the brain with respect to this anchor group of high functioning individuals. His fourth biofeedback session, we'll read about biofeedback, moved him a little bit more now into the yellow range in most of the networks. And this is an important view to have because you will see that some networks will move faster than other networks and that allows you to do biofeedback on particular networks if you wish, particularly those that are uh, most distant from optimal peak function.
And then on the, after the fifth biofeedback session, this individual is doing quite well everywhere except now the attention dorsal attention network still could use some, some work. And this is an example where you can continue to improve functioning uh, in the, uh, your patient or your client by identifying those networks that are uh, least uh, uh, close to the peak performing networks. So this is the um, brain function index. Uh, it is a per use product. It is uh, very useful 